All right, so by now you've seen all the videos in the Dave Dev TV Mitten series, and you may or may not have finished all of the deep dives as well. By now you should have your app up and running on Heroku, which is awesome. Good job. And what one thing that it is that people have been asking me is how do I make it real time? Like for example, say I have another window open here. Let's open another window. I go to localhost 3000, oops, localhost 3000. Here's my mittens page. And let's say I submit one, one new meow over here, submit, but the other page still has the old list. They would have to refresh in order to see that. So like what one person was suggesting to me, why don't you use socket IO to update all these pages in real time. If you have users around the world using this app, there's gonna be meows coming in at all times. Just like on Twitter, whenever a new tweet comes in, you don't have to refresh the page. The page automatically brings in the new one. So the way to do that is with socket IO, or with web sockets, I should say, but the most popular library for that is called socket IO. So all you do is Google socket IO, it's socket.io is the website. And I think under docs, um, it shows you real quick how to do it. In fact, this first top of the fold of the docs page uh, on the, uh, yeah, the docs page has the server code and the client code, everything you need to do in order to get this working. So let's run through it really quick. So stop the server. Let's do npm install um, socket.io dash dash save enter and again it's just an npm library just like any other library and there we go it's installed i can start the server back up again okay so let's see what they're saying to do here in the server side it says you have your app okay that's fine um oh actually no i should be using express here they have some instructions for express so we did this already we we already have this code where it um var app equals express that's what they're saying to do here um var server equals require http server app so i guess i got to do that too so let's do this var server equals that and then the next thing is var io equals require socket.io server so i'm going to throw that in as well okay i'm going to save that let's make sure everything works okay looks okay to us Okay, and then server.listen80. So that means listen on port 80, I'm guessing. So let's try that. Okay, it's listening. Okay. Um, okay, so let's see. IO.onConnection. So here's where it gets interesting. They're saying whenever um, there's a new connection to the, uh, the socket IO server, um, you can do some stuff. We don't need this, but I'll throw it in there anyway inside our code just so you can see what's happening. Now let's try this. Let me get rid of all this. Console.log new client connected. Okay. Let's just make sure this is working. Um, so here's our server down here. Um, here's our two pages. Let me refresh this page. Okay. It didn't really say it. Um, I was hoping it would say new client connected. Hmm. Let's try this, localhost 3000. Okay, didn't say it. Let's go back to our code for a second. io.onConnection, new client connected. Okay, I'm gonna ignore that for now. Hopefully it works, um, but let's skip over that for now. Um, oh, I think I know why. It's because we didn't do the front end code yet. So on the front end, you need to do this. You gotta do script source, um, you gotta include this slash socket io slash socket io js script um so let's go to our index uh where's our code okay so here's our code here in the head so let's put it let's put our socket io stuff before our main um let's put it before every script all the other scripts um right now the sources seems to be loading from the server but you might be asking hey i don't have a socket io javascript file on my server how is this even possible well this socket io library that you just installed has this front end um javascript file already bundled up with it so it's just like everything you need all in one you don't need to separately download like a 
kind of like what we did for Angular. We separately downloaded the front end package. Um, this package comes with the server package. So it's all synced up and ready to go. Um, so this should work. And then once you have that, now you can do var socket equals io dot connect um, localhost. Uh, let's see if this works. So let's go to our controller for home controller and then paste this. So let's connect to the thing here. Um, let's see if this works now. Refresh. I'm still not seeing the connection message, so I don't know. Let's keep going. Uh, socket dot on. Yeah, that connect. Why isn't that connecting? Let's do this. Socket IO detect connection. Detect connection status. How can I detect when the connection of the client gets interrupted? I connect. Oh, it should on connect. Hold on, let's take a look at our code for a second. Did I say connection? Let's try connect. Okay, restarting the server. Refresh. No, it's still not going. Um, What am I doing wrong here? Oh. Oh, I did the wrong express framework. What is going on here? This is not what I did. Create server socket IO app. Uh, what am I doing wrong here? Require socket IO. Let's try app. Let's see if this works. Let's restart. Oh. We're trying to attach to an express handler function. Okay, no, never mind. I was right in the first place. Oh, server. Okay. Uh, console.log on connection. Is it connect or connection? I don't know what's going on here. New client connection. Save. Okay. Let's refresh it. I'm not seeing it log. It should say in the server log, new client connected or new client connection. Um, but it's not logging it, so I'm worried now that our our front end is not connecting to our server. Let's try to figure out what's going on here. Um, on connection. Log data IL localhost app dot listen server dot listen eighty. Let's try let's try eighty one. Maybe for some reason eighty is not working for us. Colon eighty one. Let's try this. Uh, refresh. Huh. That is not connecting. What could be causing this problem? Yo, not connecting. Let's see what's wrong here. Server dot lesson. IO dot sockets. Oh, IO dot on connection. IO dot on connection. That's what I'm doing, right? IO IO dot on connection. Okay. What am I doing weird here? Front end client. Second out client. Oh, am I doing IO dot connect on the client? Let's just make sure this is worrying. Um, let's try this, I guess. Socket.onConnect. Uh, console.log connected. Save that. Let's refresh. Inspect. Make sure there's no console errors. IO is not defined. Okay, I have a syntax error here. IO is not defined. 
How is I not defined? I have this. Let's try this. Copy. Paste. Socket IO. Oh, oops, let's try 80. 81, actually. It is there. Socket IO. Socket IO JS. Oh. Okay, interesting. It's this is not going to work because if I leave this script here like this, it's gonna it's gonna use port eight thousand. It's not gonna use the uh, or sorry port three thousand. It's not gonna use the port eighty that it should be listening on over here. Port eighty. So what we're gonna have to do is HTTP local host eighty. That is what we're going to have to do uh, for now. I'm sure there's a better way to go about doing this, but um, let's see. Connection refused on 81. Oh, sorry, it should be 80. Let's go back to, it defaults to 80 if I don't specify a, uh, a port here. Let's refresh. Okay, connected, new client connected, new client connection. Okay. So that's all good. So now I know that there's a uh, connection happening between the client and the server. So what I want to do is when there's a new meow that's created, I want to automatically refresh the other browsers so I can listen for that event. But first, before I can listen to it, let we have to admit it first. So I have to do... Where's the post? Okay. So before I send back the success, I'm going to do io.emit um, new meow. I think that's all I got to do. Um, just emit a new event. Emit means send out to the world um, this new thing that just happened. And then I can say something like socket.on dot on means wait for something to happen so dot on new meow and then have a function and then it, it you could pass back data but we're not sending back any data we're just saying there's a new one um so i, I could just say console dot log there's oops there's a new meow i'm just gonna say that for now let's just see if that works so let's keep this console open as you can see, it's connected. So let's refresh this and let's make a new one. Okay, it made it. Okay, this one didn't log it. Oh, actually, let me refresh it. Connected, let's try it one more time. Submit, and there we go. This other browser detected that there was a new meow out there because the server emitted a new event because I created a new meow. Just to recap, let's take a look at that one more time inside the server.js, inside my new meow post, app.post slash meows route, I just added this one simple little line, io.emit new meow. New meow I made up, but emit is a function of the io object, and the io object is created up here based off of the socket io library. And on the front end, um, all I'm doing is loading that socket io library from the server, and inside my controller, I'm initializing that connection to the socket, and then I'm waiting for this event to happen. Now, what's the next step? The next step is to refresh the meows once this happens. So I copy get meows, and I'm just gonna paste it right here. So when it detects a new meow, it will automatically refresh. So here's this website, and here's this one. Here, let me just refresh this real quick. Okay, see now they're the same. So let's see what happens when I make a new one. This is a new one. Submit. And there we go. The other site just got updated. So it's all in real time now. Congrats. You have a very flashy, cool, real time tweeting, meowing app thing. So hope you enjoyed the series. Stay tuned for the next one, which will be in due time. I don't like to make promises, but uh, yeah more stuff to come.